Hi everyone, welcome to another video on indirect taxation. This time I'm going to dissect how an indirect tax impacts a market in real detail. And this could be really great for you top economists out there that really want a detailed understanding of what a tax does. I've drawn the basic diagram that you should be aware of. A tax increasing the cost of production for a firm, thus shifting the supply curve upwards from S1 to S1 plus tax. You should also be aware that the vertical distance between the two supply curves is the value of the tax. So here we're working with a specific tax, an indirect tax, which per unit sold is exactly the same value. So no matter where you take the vertical distance, the value of the tax will always be the same. What I want to do here is isolate the impacts from different stakeholders in the market and then finish with the end outcome to society, which is a deadweight loss. So we should know that the tax shifts the supply curve upwards to S1, from S1 to S1 plus tax. So it shifts upwards, S1 to S1 plus tax. And that's an important start. The reason it shifts up is because there is an increase in the cost of production. Do not, do not say it shifts left. That's incorrect. It shifts upwards, right? The tax, um, the upward distance, the vertical distance is the value of the tax. So we're shifting it upwards now from S1 to S1 plus tax. Equilibrium is now changing the market from P1, Q1 to P2, Q2. So price has increased from P1 to P2. Quantity has decreased from Q1 to Q2. Fair enough, that's relatively simple. We can also work out that the government is gaining revenue here, and in fact we can calculate by how much they're gaining revenue. So, remember the vertical distance between the curves is the value of the tax. So if we go to our new equilibrium, which is a P2, Q2, the vertical distance from that equilibrium down to the old supply curve, BC, is the value of the tax, times by the number of units sold as a result of the tax, which is now Q2, gives us an area. And the area it gives us is the rectangle P2, B, C, E. That represents the area of government revenue. So P2, B, C, E is the total amount the government is getting. The value of the tax times by the number of units sold um, when the tax has been implemented. We can also work out how much the producer and how much the consumer is suffering as a result of this tax. How much do they have to pay of this big box? Well, the consumer pays the difference in price. So now the price has increased from P1 to P2, so that part of the rectangle is being paid by the consumer. So the consumer is paying P1, P2, B, D. So this top part of the rectangle is the consumer burden, which means the rest has to be paid for by the producer. And that is P1, D, C, E. So the bottom rectangle is how much the producer has to pay. We can also work out the impact on producer revenue. So this just tells us, that box tells us how much the government is gaining, and then we can break it down to say how much the consumer has to pay and how much the producer has to pay. To work out actual revenues now, and the impact it's having on producer revenues, we can go even further. So, the new revenue that producers are gaining, well, they're selling Q2 units here, and basically, if you think about it, the price they're getting is E. They're not getting P2 because they have to pay the difference between E and P2 in tax, right? So that difference in price there is how much the tax is worth. They don't actually keep any of that box at all. It's all there into the government. So it's just this rectangle down below. So new, I'll call it new revenue, is equal to 0, Q2, C, and E. That's the new producer revenue. If you compare to what they were making before, producer revenue before the tax was actually the box um, Q1, A, P1, 0. They were selling Q1 units and they were getting a price of P1. So that entire box there gave you what producer revenue was before the tax. But now they're getting much less, they're getting a much smaller box. So you can see how much they've lost. So if I say lost revenue, you'll see that's equal to P1, A, Q1, Q2, and C. So it's like a little you know, inverted L shape. P1, A, Q1, Q2, C, and E. That entire area there is how much the producer is actually losing out as a result of the tax being implemented. They're losing out a huge amount of revenue there. 
And we can also say there is a welfare loss. The deadweight welfare loss is the triangle A, B, and C. So this triangle here represents the deadweight loss to society. I'm going to make a video, and feel free to watch my video, on why an indirect tax causes a deadweight loss. It's a very interesting concept and something you should be aware of and understand as well. So hopefully now you've understood how we can dissect this diagram and the impacts on different stakeholders from the diagram. We can go one stage further though and really in detail analyse the impacts on consumers producing the government. Let's start with consumers. Consumers do not like a tax. Why? Because it eats into their consumer surplus. They lose out consumer surplus, they have to pay more for a given product um, and therefore they lose out. So consumers don't like it, they have to pay higher prices, they pay quite a large chunk of this tax, especially when demand is quite inelastic. Most of the tax will then be passed on to the consumer and they'll have to suffer by paying much higher prices. So consumers don't like it. Uh, looking a bit further, workers may also suffer here because as the number of units being sold and produced is falling, that may mean that the number of workers in the business will also fall. It may lead to unemployment. It may lead to some workers losing their job, which can impact on workers as well. That's not a good thing. However, if demand is inelastic, there'll be a, a smaller fall in quantity, and therefore that argument may be limited. Producers don't like a tax either. Why? Because it eats into their producer surplus. The profits they're making actually end up falling. Look at revenues. Revenues have fallen massively. They hate it. They absolutely hate it. They would like it more if demand was inelastic, because then they can pass on most of the tax to consumers, but it means they are going to suffer fallen revenue, they may have to cut jobs as a result of this, which is not good for producers. The government love it though. This is a great way for the government to earn more revenue, to gain income from taxation. And even more so, they like it a lot because if demand is inelastic, there may not be a negative effect on jobs. The number of people that are in work may actually still be the same in this given business, um, because quantity in the market will not fall by very much, so maybe they can find a way to increase their revenues without having much of a negative impact on unemployment. So, in that sense, the government like it a lot, producers and consumers do not like it at all. However, we can evaluate by using elasticity. The impacts on stakeholders will change massively if we change the elasticity. The more inelastic, the more consumers suffer, uh, the less producers suffer, the more elastic, switch it around. And that could be a nice exercise for you to do on your own to see if you really get it. Make demand elastic and elastic and isolate the effects. Hope that video does it for you. Very interest, interesting stuff for a top economist that will really trigger some very uh, stimulating thoughts. Thanks for watching. See you next time.